recent rain hasn't halted water restrictions in Gore, which was hit hard last summer. Drought was declared in the Southland region in January with stringent water restrictions imposed on the district's residents. The Gore District Council held a meeting this morning to discuss changes to its water restriction regime in a bid to lessen the impact on residents. Our Otago Southland reporter Tess Brunton was there. Underneath the Matoro River lies the water supply for the Gore District. Water seeps through the riverbed, collecting in aquifers below, which the Gore District Council then pumps out and treats before it reaches residents. It's been in short supply, with water restrictions in force for 83 days between June 2017 and May this year. Gore resident Terry McNamara says the drought last summer hit more than just his garden. The sad part of it was I didn't finish painting my house because the paint virtually snapped dry on the brush, so we had to give that away. It was frustrating. We actually had to be very careful about watering the garden. We decided not to water anything that wasn't edible. Terry was one of three people who spoke at the council's hearing on the proposed water restriction changes. The current water restriction levels go from level zero, which is in force year round, to a total hose ban at level four. The new approach includes five different levels that range from simple conservation to essential use only and targets outside usage. It allows for small paddling pools to be filled and vegetable gardens to be watered until level five is declared. Previously, they were cut out early. At the hearing, Mr McNamara questioned why businesses and industries shouldn't be compelled to do more. I think you need to actually have in, in your document a regulatory regime that says that in times of scarcity, the industrial people will reduce their draw or demand on the water system, not just hammering the townspeople. That's not fair. There were only 53 submissions on the changes in a district of more than 12,000 people. 36 people supported the new plan. Speaking to residents on the streets of Gore, many weren't aware of the consultation. I didn't actually know anything about that consultation, so I've not submitted anything or, yeah, I wasn't aware that that was actually going on. I didn't know much about it at the time. I just keep it within what I need, not what I like. No. Nah. And why did you decide not to get involved? I don't really know nothing about it. Probably because I don't read the paper enough to know what's going on. Peter Kempthorne says the changes are too lenient. Most people, they pay their rates, they expect water, and that's the rationale behind a lot of the apathy, because we're wasting money with meetings and consultants and all the rest of it, but what are the penalties? That's the problem I see, it's got no teeth. <coughs> It's got no penalties. Mr Kempthorne says the council just needs to open its pockets and pay for new infrastructure. You need to start actually just replacing the pipe. There's cast iron pipe, there's asbestos pipe, there's plastic pipe, there's all sorts. And I think you just need to get a contractor in, hourly rate, he can't quote for something that he can't see, and just start replacing the pipes. The council is planning to invest nearly $13 million to improve the ageing water supply infrastructure over the next decade. It also set up a water task force earlier this year and is considering whether to make installing water tanks compulsory for all new builds in Gore and Matoda. The council's regulatory and planning general manager, Dr Ian Davidson-Watts, says the recent heavy rainfall should keep drought at bay this summer. The general trends going forward and the predictions we're getting out of organisations like NIWA are going to tell us that, yes, we will get wet years every now and again, but the trend will be much longer, drier summers. So relying on the river going forward is, is something that is going to become a little bit less certain. Gore District Mayor Tracy Hicks says the council and residents need to be proactive about conserving water. Everybody is gradually getting a, a better understanding of the value of water. And I think that's shifted quite considerably over the last decade, going from a point where you could turn your tap on at any point in time and use as much water as you want. I think most people realise now that is a resource that is...